Hey everyone out there, uh, Darren here with Push. Today we're going to be showing you guys a quick installation video of our new uh, ACS3 uh, coil conversion kit for the Fox 36. With this particular install, we're going to take into consideration that you not only have the ACS fork kit, but you also have our do-it-yourself um, service kit for your front fork as well. So if you have a brand new fork that you're installing this into and you're not looking to do a lower leg uh, service or seal change, then obviously you can just ignore those steps. Necessary tools and gear required. Um, we've got some Simple Green. We also have uh, some Maxima Suspension Clean, which is a product that we use here for cleaning suspension parts. We've got a uh, 3 8 ratchet, uh, torque wrench, We've got a 10 millimeter six point socket. We've got a 15 millimeter six point socket. We have a 32 millimeter push uh, chamferless uh, socket for the fork top cap. We've got a dental pick. We've got a little uh, two millimeter hex key. I've also got a uh, box wrench and a DH tire lever. Um, one or either uh, you can use. We prefer the tire lever for prying out seals. And we've got a little uh, tap hammer. And then I've also just got a little rod here for helping um, get rags down the lower legs for cleaning those. Uh, over here we have our uh, ACS uh, fork kit for this uh, fork. And then we also have a complete uh, do-it-yourself um, lower leg service kit. Uh, both these available obviously from Push. So to get into this, uh, first thing we're going to do is uh, safety glasses. Safety first. So we're going to put on our uh, safety glasses before we get started. Uh, very first step we're going to work on is just removing the air valve cap and we're going to completely depressurize the front fork. Make sure there's no air in there. Using a 3 8 uh, ratchet and our push 32 millimeter chamferless socket, we're going to loosen up this top cap and remove the upper air assembly. Um, if you do hear a little burp of air, that's completely normal. So we're going to take this out and set it aside. We will not be using it again. The next step, we're going to flip the fork up, remove the safety cap on uh, the rebound adjuster. Using our two millimeter key, we're just going to loosen up the set screw. Remove this rebound adjuster, set it aside. We will be reusing that. Uh, 15 millimeter socket first. We're going to loosen this lower nut about two full turns so that we're leaving, um, so we're just leaving a small gap between the nut and the lower leg. Because what we're going to do is we're going to close up that gap by tapping this, which will break it free from the lower leg. So give it a good whack. And you should feel that rod go loose. So we're just going to remove this nut. We're going to do the same thing on the other side using a 10 millimeter socket. We're going to loosen up the other lower nut. And both of these nuts have a little plastic crush washer which may come off. This one is going to come off. Sometimes they're a little jammed on there. When you tap it with a hammer, it'll, it'll pop right off. So now we're just going to tap that, a little nudge and we're going to drop the lower legs. Depending on how much your fork has been used, when the last time it was serviced, this may or may not have a bunch of fluid that comes out. I'm going to set those aside for a second. Now using our um, dental pick, we're going to find the retaining ring in here at the bottom of the fork leg. Inside here in the retaining ring, so we're going to find the section that's got the little flap that's up, and then that way we can get underneath it and then just pry it up and around, and then it'll come right out. We're going to be reusing that, so set that aside. Now we're just going to uh, kind of wiggle and pull the air shaft assembly out. Usually they have a bunch of uh, goop on them, so set that aside because we're not, going to be, we're not going to be using it. So we're just going to use a lint-free towel and clean this fork. This is one of the forks here at Push, so it's already pretty clean. It's a great area to use. Uh, some simple green or isopropyl alcohol or like I said we use Maxima suspension clean product that just helps clean all the stuff really good. Clean the outside of the fork tubes as well. In our fork service kit is going to be a little blue travel indicator o-ring. I'm going to go ahead and slide that on. Okay. The next step we're just going to keep going with the chassis here. So in my conversion kit is a, an entire lower rod assembly. 
I'm going to pull that out. There's a fresh crush washer and a, a new foot nut that we're just going to take off. In our service kit, there's a little packet of SOS lube. Put a light film of that lube onto the uh, lower spring perch. And you know what? I'm going to, for good measure, I'm going to take and put a little film on the inside of the tube. This comes, you'll notice that the fork model and the fork travel are laser etched onto the bottom of the post. So you just want to confirm. This says 36. 160, so it's for a Fox 36, 160 millimeter travel. Okay, so we're gonna just install this lower assembly into the tube. Make sure we're gonna reuse the stock retaining ring. Make sure it's nice and clean. And we're just gonna go ahead and reinstall that retaining ring into the gland. I always like to take the dental pick and find the edge of the ring. And then if you can lightly spin the ring with a very little pressure, you know it's fully seated into that lower gland, which is, uh, which is nice, just to make sure it's nice and secure. This is our blue spring, which is our 45 um, pound per inch spring. Uh, on the outside of the spring, you'll notice there's a little bit of heat shrink tubing that's just used to keep the spring quiet when it's in the fork legs. We're gonna go ahead and install our spring. Um, some people grease these, I, I don't. If your fork does have a bit of noise, you can put a little bit of uh, grease on the outside of that heat shrink too to help quiet things down. Uh, next in your kit, you're gonna find a, uh, the uh, upper spring cap. And there's also two uh, small discs that are inside of there. The discs are for spring preload. So we consider zero preload just the cap only. So when you put the cap in, this is a zero preload or a minimum preload setting for, this, for the uh, spring. If you need to um, decrease your sag, so if your fork is sagging too much and you want to add a little bit of preload to raise the ride height of the fork, you simply pull this spring cap out, take your preload spacer, and just install it down inside and then reinstall this. And that'll um, add a little bit of preload to the fork. So we have three different settings. Minimum preload is uh, no washers, uh, 100 thousandths preload, 200 thousandths preload. So that'll just adjust the ride height of your fork to your desired um, sag measurement. Uh, in this case, we're just gonna set those aside. We're gonna start off with a minimum preload, which we, what we recommend is just starting off with minimum preload first uh, before you get going. So we're gonna put that in. Uh, the last component is your actual air bump stop unit. Uh, this is what controls the progressivity of the fork. So we have the main coil spring as your uh, sag and ride height. So for two thirds of the travel, you're just using the coil spring. And then for the last third, this air bump stop engages and makes the fork more or less progressive. So before we install the air bump stop, we're just gonna put a light film of lube, our SOS lube around on the O-ring and the thread. Install that down the center. And on this one, we use a torque wrench and our 32 millimeter chamferless socket. And this is gonna to be torqued down to 220 inch pounds. Okay, all right, so this chassis is all ready to go. The next thing we're gonna do is uh, get the lower legs prepared. So we are gonna do a seal service. For this, uh, I'm just gonna start by using our tire lever. We're gonna get underneath the fork seal, in a, underneath the fork seal, kind of where the foam ring area is, put our tire lever on there and just simply pry it up. Put that aside. Gonna repeat that on the other, other leg. Pry that up. Now we wanna make sure that we're doing a good job of cleaning out the lower legs, especially if your fork hasn't been serviced in a while. You just wanna make sure whatever you use, if it's a uh, simple green or uh, isopropyl alcohol or like us with the Maxima suspension clean. You want to do a very thorough job of cleaning this out. We always want to make sure that we install the new seals with the seal gland being completely clean and dry and the seal surface clean and dry. We don't install our fork seals with any kind of lube. So if I grab our fork kit, in our do-it-yourself kit we've got a bottle of Maxima plush lower leg fluid, we've got our syringe, We've got our seal driver and a seal kit. Got a sweet sticker in there. Don't forget to use that on your toolbox or your car or your bike. Seal kit will come with new crush washers as well to use. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take and fill the cap nearly full with fluid, of the plush fluid. Take our foam rings and we're just gonna dunk them in there and squeeze them a couple of times and just allow them to absorb that fluid. We'll let those sit in there. Take a little SOS lube, 
I'm going to put it on a light film on the inside of the seal, install it completely, uh, slide it down on the driver until it stops. I'm going to spray a little bit of cleaner on the outside of the seal so that we're putting it in nice and dry. We're going to line up the fork seal uh, with the bushing and then just give it a tap. These are, uh, our seal driver is self-aligning and nice and tall so you don't have to worry about hitting your fork brace. So we're going to repeat that process on the other side. Light film on the inside of the wiper. Install it all the way down on the tool. And clean and dry that real quick. Install it into the guide bushing. Just give it a couple of taps and I'll push it all the way down. Now we're going to take our foam rings that we're pre-soaking and take them out and just put it in your finger and stretch it out a little bit. Makes it easier when we reinstall the lower legs. So we're just going to take that foam ring and kind of fit it into the gland below the wiper seal. Same thing on the other side, just kind of pre-stretch it a little bit. Put it in there, make sure it's nice and square. Now we're going to take our install our lower legs onto the upper assembly. Just going to make sure that we make sure these rods are about the same length, just makes it easier. Gonna slide this down. You might have to wiggle them a little bit. Ooh. And to ensure that the foam rings aren't pinched or anything, this should move quite freely once you get them lowered on there. Now we're going to drop these down and before we um, before we have the foot bolts come through the bottom, I'm just going to take my syringe, pull the little cap off the end. I'm going to fill it up with 40 cc's of plush fluid and I'm going to push 20 cc's of fluid into the lower legs, or 20 cc's on each side into the lower legs. Then we can expose the foot bolts. It's really important that you, when you service your fork, that you always close up these lower foot nuts uh, with everything extended. So if it's an air fork, you want to pressurize it so everything's fully extended. Uh, that way you don't form a vacuum inside the, in between the lower leg and the um, inner tube. So our seal kit came with two new crush washers. So I'm going to slip new crush washers over the foot bolts. Your ACS kit comes with a new foot nut, a blue one. You want to make sure you use the blue foot nut on our, on our rod and that you don't reuse the stock foot nut that comes with your fork. Put the stock foot nut on the damper side. Next we're going to uh, set our torque wrench to 50 inch pounds. We're going to torque the left and the right foot nut down to that 50 inch pounds. Okay, now we're ready to clean the fork. I'm going to do that before we install the rebound adjuster and the safety cap. So again, I'm just using a Maxima suspension clean product. Simple green works, isopropyl alcohol, any kind of mild cleaner is nice. Just get our greasy fingerprints and stuff off of it. We're now going to reinstall the stock rebound adjuster using our hex key. And we'll, uh, at this point, we'll set our rebound adjustment and our compression adjustment as well. We have a reference chart in the owner's manual that uh, is a guide to, uh, kind of a baseline guide to use with your spring rate. So you just look up in the owner's manual what you're using for a spring rate. All the springs are colored and uh, we'll give you the baseline settings for your compression re rebound based on the spring rate that you're running. We're going to reinstall the safety cap. And that's it. It's ready to rip.